So friends, welcome back to another video. So in this video, instead of doing some tricks, I thought I'd actually teach you something. So um, we're going to talk about Lipschitz continuity, which is a sort of continuity that uh, it's in between normal continuity and C1. So it, it uh, enforces additional conditions on the function with respect to just requiring that it's continuous, uh, but it uh, it's softer than C1. Um, okay, so the idea is we take f, uh, it's taking an interval, x, y, yeah, sorry, this doesn't need to be minus r, r. It's taking an interval i to r, the real line. So let's, uh, let's also imagine an example function like, for example, x squared, and it's taking us from one to two, let's say. So this is one, this is two, uh, okay, and so we'll say that f is Lipschitz continuous if for all x, y, and i there exists an L such that, okay, well, yeah, there exists an L such that for all x, y, and i, and the L is of course greater than zero, for all x, y, and i, f of x minus f of y, I suppose it could be equal to zero, um, is less than or equal to L times x minus y, and we call uh, L the Lipschitz constant. And so what it would basically be on this example is I'm saying that I can put the whole function into a cone of slope L. So that would look like this, right? And uh, maybe maybe let's even write this example. So the example, uh, we'd have, um, so we'd have, this is, this is x squared, so we'd have x squared minus y squared, right? That's equal to x plus y times x minus y. And now we uh, note that x plus y is always less than four, right? Because uh, x and y range from one to two. So this is less than or equal to four x minus y. So our Lipschitz constant is four. And what do you know? Uh, that really does match the way I wrote the cone, doesn't it? Because, uh, yeah, sorry, I need white. Uh, because you see, this is four. So yeah, so the whole function on its uh, domain is, uh, is within this cone. And uh, if, if this sort of constant exists for the whole interval, then we'd say that it's global. Uh, now, if this function extended to infinity, I would say that it's locally Lipschitz continuous, uh, pretty much around any, uh, any domain, I could say that it's locally Lipschitz continuous. So for example, uh, yeah, I can just continue the function like this. So, um, so the function would be locally Lipschitz continuous and uh, yeah, you basically get the same information, right? Uh, some functions will be globally Lipschitz continuous on their whole domain of definition. Uh, we can have a look at these. The, the thing is like, if it's, if it's gonna explode, then you can't uh, define it for all L. <laughs> Sorry, you can't you can't just fix an L and and let that hold for all x y. The L would depend on where you are on x y, which is I guess still better than blowing up. But so I'll give you an example of uh, first of all, uh, I'll show you why uh, being C one is a stronger requirement than just being Lipschitz. So suppose uh, f is in C one, so that means that its derivative is c0, its derivative is continuous. Uh, in this case, um, we'd have f of x minus f of y for x, y, and r. But this would be just equal to, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, just f prime of, let's pick a letter, t, f prime of t, dt, from x to y or from y to x, whatever. Let's, uh, let's do y to x. I say whatever because we have absolute value. Um, so it's equal to that. 
And now mm, I can just put the absolute value inside. So it's less than or equal to uh, the integral from y to x. And I keep that in absolute because uh, maybe x is before y uh, times the f prime of t dt. Okay. And now since f prime of t is in c1, this will, okay, well, yeah, so th there's an issue here. Uh, again, uh, I'd have to either make sure that my uh, function doesn't blow up. So it, it is c1, so that means that the derivative is c0, so it doesn't blow up anywhere before infinity, but at infinity it does blow up. So you can really um, say for any choice of x, y, and r, but if you do uh, restrict yourself to a compact subset of r, then uh, you can write that this is uh, less than or equal to. Uh, so I just I just take the maximum of this, so it's less than sort of f prime infinity, which if you guys don't know, this just means the maximum value of f prime uh, of, of t for all t in r, or, or I guess if we're restricting, let me just put r, um, let me just put j, yeah, let's say j. So, c1 or j. Yeah, let's just be careful. Uh, and then j, a subset of r. It could be r, depending on the function. Um, okay, so it, it just, the only thing we need this j for is is for this. So if the function is dying off at infinity, or uh, if it's bounded at infinity, then it's fine, then j can be r. So this is less than uh, f prime at infinity, and that's finite. Uh, I mean, the infinity norm of f prime, it's not f prime at infinity, uh, times x minus y. And so uh, this can be your Lipschitz constant. And so every function, that is c1 and bounded, which really does mean c1 and bounded at infinity, because if it's c1, it's bounded where it's not infinite. Uh, so if it's c1 and it's bounded at infinity, then uh, its derivative, its maximum derivative can just be the uh, Lipschitz constant. And so if you have some sort of example, like uh, let, now let's look at examples again. Mm. So whenever I give you a, a C1 function, like for example, uh, we had x squared, right? Uh, you immediately know that this is Lipschitz continuous because it's C1, right? So you know that uh, x prime, uh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> so this, its derivative, its derivative is two x. And so on the interval, if we set if we set j equal to the interval one, two, uh, then two uh, x is less than four for all x in j. And uh, look at that, that is really what our Lipschitz constant is. Like you would maybe expect that uh, the Lipschitz constant you get here would be um, a bit not as conservative, right? But in this case, it ends up being the same. So yeah, so that's pretty nice. Uh, let's see, I don't know, like something that you couldn't really do nicely uh, without this, for example, would be arctangent x, right? So if you had arctangent x minus arctangent y, you, you'd really have to know all those ugly formula. Uh, but here you just uh, use that it's the integral from x to y. Of, uh, of the derivative of arctangent of x, right? The derivative of arctangent of x is just one uh, plus t squared dt. Uh, I, I do hope that's right. Yeah, that's probably right. Uh, and then this is less than or equal to, uh, so the, the thing in the denominator is greater than or equal to one so one over it is less than or equal to one. So this is just less than one y minus x or x minus y. Okay, let's write x minus y. Uh, so you see what I use is one plus t squared is greater than one. 
Uh, this is for all t, by the way. This is for all t in R. So, so this one is globally Lipschitz continuous. And so 1 over 1 plus t squared is less than or equal to 1. And, and that's how I just uh, took out the x minus y and, and bounded this 1 over 1 plus t squared. And now uh, maybe an example where this won't work, but it is Lipschitz continuous. So let's say f of x is 1 over square root x. So I, I think this is the most famous example of, of where it fails. So of course, uh, no, not 1 over x, just, just square root x. So f prime of x, I'm getting ahead of myself. f prime of x is 1 over 2 square root x. And, uh, and so you see, uh, this is not Lipschitz continuous at zero. So um, rather f is not in C1. So this f of x is not in C0. Uh, but of course, square root x minus square root y. Oh, geez, how does this go? <laughs> square root x minus square root y. Uh, this is going to be what? Exactly. Yeah, of course. And this is square root x plus square root y times square root x minus square root y. Uh, of course, either one. maybe I should write x is in r plus, right? So uh, including zero, but x can't be negative. Uh, so this is what square root x plus square root y. So this part in the denominator is fine. Uh, at zero, I guess it, it's not fine, but uh, yeah, this is fine at zero. At zero, this is fine. Um, so we can just forget about zero, I suppose. Uh, so this is, yeah, we need absolute values. Uh, this is square root x plus square root y, x minus y, right? It's just the difference of squares. And uh, so basically, whatever interval you're on, this will be your Lipschitz constant. Whatever uh, interval you're on, this will be your Lipschitz constant. And uh, so this is for x, y not equal to zero. Well, I rather x and y are not equal to each other and not equal to zero. And if x equals y, then clearly x minus y is just equal to zero. So. Uh, so you're fine there, which is equal to L times X minus Y. Uh, well, it's less than L times X minus Y, less than or equal to for all L greater than zero. So, uh, so you're fine there. And so then you can just set this L to be the max uh, of, of the, of the, I don't know, let's, let's say AB, max AB where j goes from minus a to b, that's the interval, right? Uh, so uh, the interval of definition. So then x will not be from r plus, it will be from j. So uh, the square root function is just Lipschitz continuous uh, locally. It's not globally Lipschitz continuous. So you, you do have to uh, specify where you are. Otherwise, uh, Yeah, as you're approaching zero, you have a problem. So you, you need to be careful there. But yeah, it's still fine. Okay, well, uh, there you go. Hopefully you learned something. Let me know if you guys have any ideas for future videos. And see you next time. Bye-bye.